Welcome to my Jenga tutorials. I am Sean Stoops and this is part one of a series of videos on how to first set up and then develop for Django. This video is created with an application called I Show You. In this part we will be installing all the required components to run Django and then installing the Django code itself. Uh, the required components consist of Apache, PostgreSQL, PsychoPG2 which is the uh, Python interface to Postgres, a package MX date time, which is just time functionality for the Django code itself, uh, mod Python, which is Apache's interface to Python, and then Subversion, which is a utility we will use to download the Django code. I've went ahead and typed out my command that I'll need to download all this. It's just an apt get install with all of the package names. I will copy paste that into my terminal. This is an SSH console into my Ubuntu 6.10 EGF server. Now we will use the Postgres account which was created during install to create a database, uh, create another user, and then grant per permissions on that database. So let's SU into the Postgres account. PSQ SQL is the command to go into the Postgres console. So let's create user, uh, just Django user. Create database, uh, let's call it Django DB. And then grant all permissions, which is read, read, write, select, everything, to, or grant all on database Django DB to Django user and we are done in here so it's control D out of there sue back up to the root account and we are ready to download the Django source code I will just CD out to my home directory and I'm going to create a new directory just called SVN which we will use to uh, download our code into the the Django site has an installation guide which pretty much walks you through exactly everything I'm going over which install Apache Mod Python, get your database running um, and then install the Django code. They've got a, a package they call the official version which is just all packaged together but it's slightly older code uh, what they actually recommend doing is installing this latest development version. Uh, the only time you would install the official version is if you had a reason that you could not use the, the development version. Like if you already had applications or projects that required the older code base. So let's get this link right here, which is a subversion link. Copy that and we will paste this into our console. And that will start to download. come back over here this command right here will create the symbolic link which will tie the Django code into Python so let's copy that bring it back over here and paste that in there one change we do need to make is to change that to Python 2.4 because that is our default Python install that comes with Ubuntu create that symbolic link and then one final thing is to put this Django admin file in our local system path. So we will copy that in there. And then we can call that command from anywhere, which is the command we will use to create a new project. It does a number of other things but I will get into those in later videos. So now let's CD back up and let's create a directory just called Django projects. Uh, this is where I always put my Django projects and in, inside the projects you put your applications. Uh, this can really be anywhere you want on your file system. I just choose home directory because it's easy to get to. So from here, we will use the Django admin command to start a project. 
and let's just call it project one. See, it created one project, CD into there, and these are the files it creates automatically. Uh, the manage.py is similar to the Django admin. Uh, it'll let us create our applications, it'll let us run a test server, um, it'll let us sync our databases, so on. Settings.py we will be editing right now, and it is where the, your database settings and your application settings, everything is held. So in here, yeah, you can see this debug is will allow, like if you have any Django errors in your code, uh, it'll bring up a uh, really user-friendly error message in your browser, and it's really helpful for debugging and tracing down your problems. Uh, let's continue on down to the database section. Our engine is PostgreSQL using the PsychoPG2 package. Our database name was just Django DB. Database user was Django user. And I did not assign it a password, which is not very secure, but it should work for now. The rest of this file is just further configuration to set up templating systems, more applications, uh, your media directories, and so on. I'll cover these in later videos. So we are done in this file. So we can save, exit that. Just for a test here, let's go ahead and create an application. We'll use the manage file and uh, start app, and then just call it app1. And there that is created. And that creates your models file and your views file. The models file is what holds your database structure. You define all your your field types, your foreign keys, primary keys, everything. Um, your views file is where your actual Python code goes, which is your functions used for any database access, processing, anything. So let's go back up to here and let's. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run the built-in development server that Django comes with just a little web server you can use for testing just so you're not running all your development environment through Apache. Um, we need to know our IP address for this since because just by default when you run the development server it only allows uh, connections from localhost and since Django is installed on my server I will need to allow connections from outside of localhost. So find my IP address real quick and then we will use Python manage run server you just type in your IP address and then let's just use port 8000 since Apache is already using port 80 see it validates your models which we haven't defined any to this point and then it gives you your URL to go to so let's copy paste that to a browser and you can see a little friendly message saying Django is now up and running so over here it shows you your visits uh, you can come over here and let's refresh the page several times and you can see all the visits we have here and this will also show you any error messages or anything in your that you may generate if you've programmed something incorrectly so that's really all I've got to go over in this video uh, stay tuned for part two where I believe I will be going into basic Django code structure involving the models, the views, your URLs, uh, more settings, and maybe we'll get to develop a little code. Uh, from here, good luck with your Django coding, and I will see you next time.